Cairo today. The assassination of Anwar el-Sadat. Tonight, a full report. From ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings in Cairo with special coverage of the assassination of President Sadat. Max Robinson at the National Desk in Chicago. And from our desk in Washington, Frank Reynolds. Good evening. His funeral will be on Saturday. Anwar El Sadat, described by President Reagan today as a humanitarian unafraid to make peace, struck down today by, as Menachem Begin said, the enemies of peace. We go now to Cairo and Peter Jennings. Peter? Frank, it is not reflected in the streets, but Egypt is in political turmoil. A state of emergency has been declared which will last for a year. President Sadat died this afternoon at a military hospital on the edge of Cairo after many hours during which it was thought he had not been mortally wounded. It is ironic. He died amid celebrations for one of the great moments of his political career, the annual parade to mark October the 6th, 1973, when Egyptian forces crossed the Suez Canal. Sadat and his general staff were dressed in brand new uniforms. It had been quite a demonstration. American M60 tanks were on display in Egypt for the first time. The parade was almost over. ABC's Doreen Kayes was there. Egyptian Air Force jets roared over the reviewing stand in a low fly pass when suddenly a grenade was thrown and shots fired from anti-tank units moving directly in front of President Sadat. Thinking it was all part of the military display, it took seconds to realize the bullets were for real. A spray of bullets aimed directly at the Egyptian president, vice president, defense minister, and their entourage. And as the bullets flew, pandemonium broke out. The assassins, including a couple who jumped out of their vehicle, were virtually shooting at everyone in sight at close range. Several foreign diplomats, military attaches, Egyptian officials, and military men were hit. President Sadat was not to be seen. He had been removed by helicopter to the hospital. But few were aware at the time that he had been fatally wounded, almost instantly. The attack was just as devastating for others. Sadat's longtime personal secretary, who lay wounded, died shortly after. Also, the visiting Omani defense minister, an Egyptian religious leader, two Egyptian soldiers, and the presidential photographer were killed. A bloody wound covered the face of the defense minister, and Sadat's protocol chief was critically injured, his arm badly mangled. Three American military officials were also injured. There was a state of shock immediately following the attack, as Sadat's own bodyguards, military officials, and police moved about dazed. The state-run Egyptian television, which was broadcasting the military parade live, blacked out its coverage the moment shots were heard. And two hours passed before there was any official word that President Sadat had been shot at all or wounded. The first official report on Cairo Radio and TV mentioned only the attack. That was followed by Middle East News Agency official report that he had been injured but not... But Sadat's own press spokesman... Sharif Ataya told ABC News about two and a half hours after the attack that the president was dead. Doreen Kayes, ABC News, Cairo. The reaction to the assassination of admirers and his enemies were legion. The European political establishment was predictably shocked and saddened. In two Arab countries, Oman and the Sudan, his close allies are reportedly badly shaken. In much of the Arab world, where opposition to his peace treaty with Israel runs deep, his death is considered no loss. In Libya, where people virtually celebrate it in the streets, it's actually considered a gain, and Libya called on the Egyptian people to continue the revolution. The shockwaves will be felt far and wide, no more acutely than in the United States and Israel. From Israel, ABC's Steve Shepard. Most Israelis first learned of the attack on President Sadat over Israeli state-controlled radio. Throughout the afternoon, many watch television or listen to radio news bulletins for any word on the Egyptian leader's condition. Others gathered outside the Egyptian embassy in Tel Aviv for any sign that would tell them whether or not Anwar Sadat had survived the assassination attempt. When it was learned that he was dead, the reaction was a mixture of shock, anger, and genuine sympathy. President Sadat fell victim to a criminal assassination. The people of Israel share in the mourning of the people of Egypt. They hope that the peace process, despite the cruel act of its enemies, will continue. As we know, President Sadat would wish 
with all his heart. Israeli defense spokesmen had no comment on any increased Israeli military activity, if any, as a result of the assassination. For most Israelis, Anwar Sadat was a highly respected, even honored man. It was largely because of their personal trust in him that the Israeli government was willing to evacuate the Sinai Desert and important air bases like this one in Etzion in exchange for a peace treaty and normalized relations with Egypt. Now that whole process, the entire Camp David agreement, could be in trouble. Israel is scheduled to complete its withdrawal from the Sinai this coming April, and officially the government says it hopes the peace process can go forward unaffected. Unofficially, the government here will be watching developments in Egypt with a cautious and wary eye. Israelis have often wondered out loud just how the peace process might be affected if Anwar Sadat were no longer around. Now they're about to find out. Steve Shepard, ABC News, Tel Aviv. At least two groups, both in Beirut, are claiming responsibility for the assassination. One is called the Independent Organization for the Liberation of Egypt, and the other is identified as the Rejection Front for the Liberation of Arab Egypt, which is believed to be headed by a former Egyptian Army Chief of Staff, General Saeed Eldin El Shazli. Shazli appeared on Libyan television tonight and said that Sadat had betrayed the Egyptian and Arab cause. In a moment, we'll continue this broadcast with a complete report on reaction in this country to the assassination of President Sadat and the United States' view of what the consequences may be. ABC's World News Tonight, brought to you by Oil of Olay. Dared to turn his back on the past, there is no immediate and certain answer to that question. But from early morning on, it has preoccupied Washington, even as the government awaited official confirmation of the assassination. That wait was long, at times confusing, and always agonizing. We have a series of reports tonight. First, here is White House correspondent Sam Donaldson. They met for the first time two months ago, and that special bond of friendship that the charismatic Sadat had been able to develop with three former American presidents was clearly building with the fourth. There are those who claim the ingrained hatred can never be for overcome. To them, I assert, President Sadat has shown the way. You are a great companion and a most reliable friend. And like us in Egypt, you are a nation of believers. They talked and dined together, and then it was over. This morning at 7.25, President Reagan was called by Secretary of State Haig and told the news. Sadat had been shot, condition unknown. The president issued a statement saying the attack was outrageous, and he sent a message to Sadat saying, I am praying for your safety. A congressional visitor got his reaction firsthand. The first question I asked the president when I walked into the Oval Office was, how is President Sadat? And, what he said? What and he say? said it's a grave situation and he's really upset about it. But the White House seemed to have difficulty getting information. A spokesman said early on the word was Sadat was not in a life-threatening situation. Later, kept insisting the U.S. had no official confirmation of the numerous reports of Sadat's death. Then that the official confirmation came from watching the Egyptian vice president's announcement being replayed on American television. Shortly thereafter, President Reagan made a statement. Anwar Sadat was admired and loved by the people of America. His death today, an act of infamy, cowardly infamy, fills us with horror. America has lost a close friend the world has lost a great statesman, and mankind has lost a champion of peace. Late this afternoon, the president convened a meeting of his top national security advisors. U.S. military forces in the Mideast had already been told to take what was called necessary prudent precautions, and the questions now had to do with U.S. policy in the road ahead. Only last Friday in the Oval Office, President Reagan had met with Egyptian Vice President Mubarak, dispatched to Washington, it is reported, to warn of rising tensions and plots surrounding Egypt. Now, of course, the man in charge there. President Reagan is telling visitors that Sadat's death makes it more imperative than ever to sell those AWACS radar planes to Saudi Arabia. As to whether the president will attend the funeral, some of his advisors are urging him to do it. But the weight of advice Mr. Reagan is receiving tonight is that under all the circumstances, he should not. Sam Donaldson, ABC News, the White House. This is Barry Dunsmore. The death of Anwar Sadat is the nightmare American Mideast policymakers had dreaded. Frankly stated, without Anwar Sadat, a major war in the Middle East becomes more likely. This does not mean analysts believe Egypt will abruptly change course. The major economic and military assistance Egypt receives from the U.S. should keep it in Washington's orbit for a while at least. Officials here were relieved that this was not a general uprising and were pleased with the apparently smooth initial transfer of power. 
it was felt that vice president mubarak said all the right things in his first public statement.